This week on the White Knuckle Web Show, we're mixing it up. I'm taking you into the field to scout and set stands for the upcoming season. Along with that, we're starting the first of a series of the greatest whitetail story ever told. My five-year quest for the Rusty and Ailbuck and Eric Dickerson. The legends have fallen. This is the White Knuckle Web Show. Is that not the most epic sit in a tree stand? I'm pretty sure it's a, yes it is. Oh my god, he's a giant. The shot looked good. That's all I want every year right there. Look at this thing. What do you think of that? That is huge. Bam! Perfect. Came right in. Nothing like burrs in the old pants. I'm in um, one of my favorite spots, uh, the spot that I hope to make famous. I believe that I can kill the DL buck here. If you see here behind me, there's a ridge line, and you can actually see a line in the timber, that brush line. In this bottom, it's a little bit more open. Right up along that edge, it starts to go up up that ridge. And what I've been starting to realize what these bucks do is, they like to be up on those tops of the ridges and that thick stuff, be able to look down in this open, have the wind coming off this big field up top, scent check this, and they won't even go in this adjacent field until after dark. We're going to be as monitoring some trail cameras on the outside of this area, and then uh, waiting for an opportunity to move in on the Mr. DL buck. But where I'm going to be set up is probably right up in here someplace, where I can have a good view, but uh, not set up real high, just on the edge of the thick stuff, so I can catch him during daylight. There she is, she's a beaut. She's bare naked all the way up there. Um, but you can see behind me, see all the brush. There's a bunch of pine trees. This is right on the edge of a bedding area. There's um, a bunch of pines here behind me. You can see it's just kind of thick. This is where they want to bed, up on these tops. This is um, one of the ballsy sets where I think I can sneak in here during daylight. For an afternoon set right up on it by the bedded buck right up in this edge here someplace i'm going to um quickly shimmy up this thing here i got to create a path to even get in here so i got some work to do here we go i have a simple way of rating my stands from a to c an a stand is a stand that i have in one of my best areas for big bucks which are usually tough to get into and something i will save until the rut my B stands are stands I plan on hunting multiple times throughout the season that are in areas of high concentration of does, transition areas, pinch points, that type of thing. My C stands are usually on field edges or places that offer good views of a large area. They are also positioned for easy access and limited intrusion into other properties. I'm up in this tree. I was gonna go low, but once you get up here, man, that's just, there ain't much to cover. Oh, it's never pretty. So, let me get, the biggest thing is, just get the stand up um, on the tree and try it. The stand I'm hanging in this wide open tree is a bee stand. I will likely hunt it only in late October and probably only one or two times. It is set for one deer at one time of year. First try doesn't, isn't gonna work. This just isn't possible. They got this huge branch you can see right here. With this double tree, this sucker right here is right in my way, right where I would want to shoot. So, in order to use this spot, I have to um, get lower. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, these are the situations where I put in way more time picking out my trees, because if you don't, you're just not gonna have a shot where you need to. So, I'd rather be low, and just use the tree as cover trying to, I had to move the tree stand a little bit more this way. I finally have the stand set. This is where I'm hoping he'll be batting it up in this some place. I'm sneaking here some afternoon and just get up in the tree basically and 
I don't know, man. I'm trying to do the best job I can to put it in. in. I think this is going to be my spot right here. I'm just going to have to make it work. I'll have one big shooting lane. I'm going to have a couple, couple over here. And then um, just <laughs> hopefully it works out. So I'm going to tilt my platform up a little bit just so it gives me a little bit more of an angle. And we should be good. There's a very simple explanation for why I spend so much time leveling my tree stands. Noise. These stands are designed to be vertical. If they are on any angle from side to side, that's where your noise comes from. The lone wolf is the best at getting this level. Boy's pretty. And so it begins. Rusty nail at three and a half years old. Is that him? Yeah, I think it might be too. This is Rusty Nail at four and a half years old. I actually got to stare at his rack for about five minutes in the dark as he and a blonde coyote had a face off next to our stand. When he finally moved into the open, it was clear. Rusty had blown up. Good to see you old boy. I haven't seen that deer yet this year. He had also become oh, a ghost. His core deer. area had shifted and it would be the only encounter we would have with him the entire season. It just drove me crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, the rusty nail block. Beautiful, beautiful 150 class 10, four year old. I have both of his shots from last year. That's amazingly the first time we've seen that deer this year. He's a four year old deer. I want to let him go one more year. We could have pounded him right here at 20 yards. If it wasn't for a coyote, I could have pounded him here at 10 yards because he would have walked right by us. What a pretty deer, man. He looks big, doesn't he? beautiful four-year-old 10. That's the one I got a bunch of trail camera pictures to. Do you see him? The next year at five and a half years old, I would have to eat my words. I mistook this buck for a different buck. He's only a four-year-old, I'm pretty sure. I don't know why, but I just didn't put two and two together that it was the rusty nail. I guess I expected him to be bigger at five and a half years old, and the rest is what it is. For what it's worth, I am so glad that I passed it. We got a different four-year-old over here. There's two, actually two of their bucks. She's hot. But what are you even saying? I think I just passed about a thousand inches. I am. <laughs> the biggest was 150. 155 inch, four year old 10. I've got trail camera pictures of him all summer. Believe me, I tried to make him five the whole time he was coming up, but he isn't, he's only four. Oh, he's a giant, I had him at a freaking five yards right here. Could have shot every one of those deer. The doe literally ran right underneath their tree. We just gotta hope and pray there might be a five year old behind them. The next time I would see Rusty and Ale was when he was six and a half years old, but I had a date with an old friend named Barry Sanders about 15 minutes earlier. Bit. Because I had already used my one tag, I could only watch and enjoy the experience. The kicker was that I thought it was a different buck. That's freaking sippy cup. I'm not joking you. I get to actually enjoy this now. Yeah, that's him, man. Can you believe it? I didn't know what the heck was going on anymore, which is probably why I was seeing Rusty Nail. You're lucky Barry came through there a minute ago. Look at that stud. Beep. Beep. 
He must have an injury that year or something which caused one of his sides to be wacky like a turkey foot. I mean, are you serious? Oh, dude, he smells them. You see that? I think he can smell Barry over there. Unless we have another bug coming in. I mean, come on. Sippy cup, you old son of a buck. He got a nice side on the right, though, didn't he? Can you see him better? This is stupid, man. He's gonna come this way. Hey, we can get some uh, ozonic for the big mature deer. We'll see what it does here. Be rolling. See that. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a six, seven year old deer right there. I think he actually has six this year. No, seven. He's, he's out of the way. The rusty nail has also gone on to become somewhat famous in the following shots. You may have seen this footage in an Ozonix commercial. They are the real deal, guys. Wow. Um, I'm absolutely dumbfounded right now. I shot Barry Sanders maybe 45 minutes an hour ago. In comes a walking sippy cup. A buck that haunted me for two or three years. Pretty much gave up on him because his home range switched to a different area. Right there, as you see him, it's a seven-year-old deer. I could have shot him 30 times. He came down when I was blowing milkweeds. He's still standing right over there. He walked away, he didn't know what happened, and he was right down when. Next week on the White Knuckle Web Show, I actually figure out who the Rusty Nail is, and I try to get to know him on a more intimate level. It's Rusty or Bust. If you don't use real world wildlife seed, your food plots simply don't turn out. If your food plots don't turn out, your hit list buck goes to your neighbor's farm. And when your hit list buck goes to your neighbor's farm, he shoots the next state record. When he shoots the next state record, he gets on the cover of a magazine. Don't let your neighbor shoot the next state record and get on the cover of a magazine. 
Use real world wildlife seed. One of the best things about using the real world wildlife seed, and as I've got to see uh, on a larger scale this year, is with Todd's soybeans. They are absolutely insane. Uh, some of the best looking soybeans I've ever seen. Seeing the quality, uh, it's a super, super great company that produces a high quality seed, and we're, we're just happy to be partnered up with them. We went in, uh, did a frost seed, frost seed. Uh, already had to go up and mow it, um, and I mean, we were talking it was 20 inches tall, and this is this is a property that in the past we have had no success with food plots there, so um, that in itself says a lot about real world because, I mean, there's just nothing to even grow, and we got that clover, I mean, it's, it's popped up pretty good. This past season, 2013 going into 2014, I was, of course, I wanted to create the best food plots I could, and that's where we went, Don Higgins and the guys from real world wildlife seed and these guys have it as bad for whitetails as we do and when you talk to them about their product when you talk to them about their whitetails you get the sensation that you're talking to your brother and you're it's not about business it's not about anything but growing the best whitetails you can possibly grow with the best seed and offering the best product out there and I truly believe real world does that. I had to redo my clover plots after a disaster last year this year I came back with real world wildlife clover chicory mix, right? It's the chicory. It makes all the difference. It's been awesome. It, it, it's come up for a first year seeding. I've seen some good crops and some bad crops. This clover is just dynamite. I mowed it for the first time already last week and I had eight to ten inches growth on most of it. It just looks incredible. Never seen anything like it. It's been the best clover stand I've ever had bar none.